Welcome to the NEPA Scene Podcast. We're coming to you live from Cole Creative in downtown Wilkes-Barre in a uh, new studio space. We'll talk about that in a sec. But I'm Rich Halls. I'm the founder and editor of NEPA Scene. We're here with Ed Randazzo, uh, an award-winning blues roots rock singer-songwriter who will be performing with Brett Alexander this Friday, June 28th at a a Perfect Blend in Berwick as part of the Destination Blues Listening Room series. Uh, so he's going to uh, sing a song for us a cappella. so stay tuned to the end of the show for that. We're going to be talking about his latest album, Who's That Man? Uh, and looking back on 10 years of uh, making music, uh, how uh, cerebral palsy has affected his life, his longtime friendship with uh, Brett Alexander, uh, why LGBT pride is important to him, uh, creating his own uh, take on the blues, much, much more. Stay tuned for the full hour. We're going to have a, a fun, in-depth interview uh, just me and Ed here. John couldn't make it uh, this week, uh, but it's going to be a good time. So please stay tuned for the full hour, and we would love to hear from you. So please leave your questions and comments down below, and uh, we'll get to those in just a bit. So anything you want to ask uh, Ed here, anything you want to ask me, anything you want to add to our conversation, by all means, just throw it in there. Uh, we will definitely get to them uh, later in the show. So as you can see here, uh, we're in a brand new space at uh, Cole Creative, they moved. Uh, in the, they're in the same building, just uh, two floors down. Uh, so we're still kind of getting used to this space yet. Hopefully, the sound is good for you guys. Uh, I'm sure the picture's fine. It's the same cameras we've been using, uh, but it's a different space, and you're going to see some stuff moving around over the next few weeks. Uh, hopefully, you're going to add some set pieces and all kinds of things to dress it up. But for now, we're just kind of slumming it here in the front here while. There's boxes and stuff all around us as we're getting unpacked and everything here. But uh, thank you to Cole Creative uh, for for having us here. Uh, I know I'm sure it's been hectic for them the last couple of weeks. Uh, They just moved uh, down here uh, last week, which is why we didn't have a show last week. We had to kind of give them some time to set some stuff up here. So we got kind of a little makeshift thing, but that's just fine because it's just just me and you tonight. So it works out perfectly uh, that we don't have a full band or any of that kind of stuff because I don't know how we would do that in this space right now it's a much bigger room here but there's all other stuff over there and i don't know where the second couch went so we'll we'll figure it out as we go along but um we want to plug our sponsors before we get started uh beer boys provides us with these wonderful crawlers that i know you're willing to uh to crack into amazing can't wait so i'm very excited (laughs) for that uh, they, they have 72 beers on tap, uh, and they have uh, tap takeovers. And uh, last this uh, past week, they had a uh, tap takeover of Flying Fish. So uh, we're going to be trying some uh, Flying Fish brews tonight uh, from these wonderful crawlers. Uh, let's see what we have. We have uh, Flying Fish XPA. Uh, we have Salt and Sea. And we have Jersey Juice. That doesn't sound pleasant, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not a marketing guy. I don't know. Maybe that works in Jersey. Uh, so what do you want to try first? I'm going to go with Jersey juice. All just, right. Yeah, let's just, let's just dive in. Let's uh, let's go to the dirty Jers. I, 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 I'm a fan of syncopation. <laughs> what can I say? Or what, is that alliteration, syncopation, something like that? Yeah, yeah alliteration, I think. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we're going uh, to have some fun with this one. Hopefully it's... Uh, I'm sure it's good. I've had a few mm. flying fish beers before. Ooh, we'll toast my 10-year anniversary. How Absolutely. about that? Absolutely. That, that works out perfectly. Uh, I'm a gentleman. I always wait till everything's poured before you. Cheers to Thanks. 10 years and many more. Thanks, Rich. If you folks are out there just wrapping up your dinner time and you have a glass of something, mm. raise it with us, if you will. Absolutely. This is uh, not what I expected. Very light, very refreshing. Mm, this, I'm, yeah. Does does not taste like uh, Jersey sewer water or anything this like is, that. This is my so jam. The, the name is uh, misleading, but in a good way. I'd get down with this. <laughs> this is very good. I'll move that over so you can my, add some space my, there. My buddy Frank Kobus from New York, he's a big beer guy and knows a lot about it and he'd be proud of me for trying something new <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you the kind of guy that like sticks to, to one yeah yeah i'm a little i'm not you know i'm not a risk taker that way but <laughs> frank that's for you bud there you go uh so make sure you stop down uh beer boys they have live music on the weekends with no cover and a half price happy hour every night of the week eight till midnight on fridays 
and Saturdays and 9 to 11 every other night of the week. And uh, stop down for their free glass nights on Wednesdays and tell them that we sent you. Uh, we also want to plug the V-Spot we were just talking about before we went on the air. The V-Spot is one of the most popular bars in mm. northeastern Pennsylvania with live entertainment every night of the week. Uh, this week they have Dance Hall Devils, uh, who recently added the amazing Ed Cuzo to their already talented lineup. They're playing pop punk hits from on Friday night from uh, 10 o'clock on. Uh, Chris Milnew and uh, Space Machine, who sound like uh, they kind of stepped out of the 70s or 80s with uh, psychedelic rock. Really, really cool album they have coming out. Uh, so they're playing their CD release show for Guided by Starlight on Saturday at 10 p.m. with special guest Eric Best. And DJ Huff is hosting karaoke on Sunday. And uh, thank you to everybody who came out and supported NEPA scene rising talent over the season. So we just ended the final showcase uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, totally packed house, which you never know. I mean, we had a couple pre-sale tickets, but I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to draw that many people, even though we had 12 uh, amazing new acts. Uh, a lot of people that have never been in any of our NEPA scene events before. Uh, and it was a blast. It was huge. It was packed. It was like a Saturday night in there. Uh, it was crazy. So uh, thank you to everybody who came out and supported that. Thank you to the performers. Uh, th and uh, congrats to uh, magician and comedian Tony Leone for winning the grand prize. And uh, second place went to uh, Starving Hysterical Naked. They're a young indie punk band that are coming up. We're probably going to have them on the show maybe in the next month or two, so that should be fun. And we'll probably have Tony on there as well uh, as soon as we can work out with his schedule. Uh, so they won the grand prizes. Uh, thank you to the V-Spot, Fireball Whiskey, Sam Adams, LT Verastro, Ionic Development, and Musical Energy. And we'll see you back there in September. We're going to start a brand new season. Uh, this September, October, and November. So uh, if you didn't win this time, you can always come back. And if you ever wanted to try it, uh, make sure that you, you, you come out in September uh, and give it a shot. Speaking of trying things, so how did you first get into music? Uh, what, was it something that uh, you, you started uh, at a young age? I, I think music found me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it just said... Oh yeah, you know, give this a shot. But I, I always, I always loved it, and it was always on in our house growing up. You know, and w there was always dancing and big parties, and I mean, everybody was on Michael Jackson, Ozzy Osbourne, ev everybody. And <laughs> somewhere in between, I, when I first started buying records, for me it was about well, what group do I belong in? And mm -hmm. the you know '93 I really started buying records, and it was Natalie Merchant, Cranberries. The Cure, and I, I thought, well, this is my, this is my, this is my group, and then, um, I'm, I'm still listening to those bands today, but then, as far as blues and the, the the gospel thing, that came later as I started to discover my own voice, and thought, wow, this stuff is really fun to sing, <laughs> you know what I mean, and I and I do well with it, and mm -hmm. I can move people, and you know, one of the first times I ever sang. Um, people were moved to tears and I thought well they're either crying because I suck <laughs> right or <laughs> I'm I'm reaching them and it, it happened to be the latter so well that's good you know that, that was that's a that's a abbreviated uh, you know synopsis of how I got into it sure and how it got into me so that that was uh, you know how long ago was this that maybe the first um, time that you, you performed in front of people really I you know probably 90 late 99 2000 okay. so I'm really late to this party mm -hmm. um, considering you know I've come up with friends like Red Alexander and Dustin Douglas and the Husties who have been playing music their whole lives it seems so right. I'm, I'm really humbled by all of them and I, I, I know my place I'm aware. Well, you know, it's it's better late than never because, uh, you know, I get so many people at the open mic who, uh, you know, come into it later and they, they, they feel like, you know, I missed all this time or whatever, but at least you're getting up and doing it. You know, there's so many people who yeah. daydream about it, who think about it, they sing in the car, but they never really get up on a stage in front of people and they never put themselves out there because there's so much, uh, they feel so much pressure on them to do that. So they, they never really... Uh, 
you know, expand their talent or take advantage of it. So at least you, you have done that at some point. You've been at this now 10 years. Yeah, and you the, the best thing is to literally get up in front of people and be in front of an audience because that's really where you can... It's it's the it's it is the ultimate litmus test for this mm. to be in front of an audience. You know, you have to get out of your own head and out of your car right. and in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm uh, here. I am. You know, ten years later. <laughs> so your your album here, uh, which uh, you brought the uh, really nice looking vinyl here of uh, Who's That Man, and uh, this has got uh, what twelve tracks here. Yeah, you're, with vinyl you're limited as far as uh, timing on each side. So we, sure, I, I whittle it down to a nice twelve cuts. And, uh, so it's a nice amount of music, I think. So this is stuff going back to the beginning, all the way up till now. Yeah, uh, back, that back, you, back to uh, two thousand eight. So you recorded these uh, with uh, Brett Alexander of at course, Saturation yeah. Acres, and everybody knows Brett Alexander. He's a guy who pr probably needs no introduction for a lot of people, but uh, you know he's recorded a lot of local bands over the years, and he was part of the Bad Leaves for a long time and stuff like that. So did you come into this as like a like a fan uh, of his, and you've been listening oh, to him a long time? Yep, that's how it started. I I was uh, in the, the mid '90s. My 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 sister Don. Hi Don. Um, she she traveled with the guys all over, and then eventually started dragging me to the shows through horse crap and everything like that at Pocono Downs at the racetrack and <laughs> like Kirby Park, wherever they were, she would take me because mm -hmm. um, it was always those guys put on a really great show, and um, I would always I would always watch Brett. I mean, I didn't really know Brett, mm -hmm. but I would I would always watch him because he can pick up any instrument and play it well, and and sing. And I thought, hmm, there's something about him. And then what what sealed it for me was in 2004, Brett released his uh, debut solo album, Gentleman East, and that album is, has a darkness about it mm -hmm. and this sort of ominous, folky Bruce Springsteen. Uh, Johnny Cash vibe. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, if I do anything, it's going to be with this man because I love this first record. So upon hearing Gentleman East, that was really like what launched me and mm -hmm. directed me toward him and what pushed me to reach out via email uh, the summer of 2008. And I just plainly asked him, would you have time to work on a few folk songs and like reinterpret them and he like enthusiastically was like sure let's let's begin and then it was September of 2008 that we were we were in there and before you knew it the first album was was done and uh, <laughs> what what is going on and then <laughs> and then it just once that momentum took over you, right. you can't stop that it's like that inertia that you know you, you just can't stop so here we are, <laughs> ten years later, and he—he's fantastic because he, um, you know, he's so unassuming and so humble. And whoever he's working with, whether it's myself or any of the numerous uh, uh, fellow local artists that that I've become friends with, he has this way of pushing the artist to the front mm -hmm. and letting the spotlight shone on them. And he takes a backseat and he lets you do your thing. And he's. He's a wonderful human being. What do you think that he does uh, musically that maybe somebody else couldn't do? If you were collaborating with somebody else. Well, I, this is it right here. So we always he always jokes with me that you know because I don't I don't play a principal instrument. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's primarily my voice and a, a bit of percussion, but primarily the voice. So when I am writing a song, I write. From my head, so I write mm. the melody only. So when I would, I would literally send Brett a cappella renditions of my songs, <laughs> i.e., Ring Them Bells, any of the ones on here. Um, I, I use Ring Them Bells because I remember recording that in my room, just singing the melody and then sing, sing, sending it to him. And the, the thing that's magical about him is, for some reason, he knows where you're going to go 
hmm. with what you're doing. And for some reason, with the two of us, we'll just sit in the... Like, when I would arrive at the studio with the song, we'd sit knee to knee, eye to eye, very much like we're doing now, and he, he literally would say to me, okay, sing it. <laughs> and then he would grab a guitar, and he would, um, he would very quickly um, start building this bed of music out of... I mean, I came there with nothing, and then you you leave the room with this like this three minute masterpiece, you know. <laughs> and I think that that's what we we clicked with really quickly. Like, mm. I know you, I know you, and we still do that. And you know, we don't even have to. It's very, um, you know, it's music. So you don't you don't. There's not a, we don't speak a lot. We don't. There's not a lot of like dialogue. We just kind of. We do the music, because the music speaks for for both of us. Right. So, and it's been it's an absolute pleasure. I mean, it's it's very easy to work with him, um, and he also he also likes to challenge me too. I I know mm-hmm. when we were doing the third album, um, the Joy record from 2015, he said to me, you know, it's time for you to start using your mid range. And I, I'd like you to start using it because it's really beautiful. And I know you like the keys of E and the really like dark sounds that your voice makes, but you have a really nice mid range. And so mm. I adopted one of his songs, and that is "Wade in the Water" from the third album. And it's also it made it onto the new LP. And so I I like that that's on there because it's not only the two of us collaborating on one of his pieces, but it's a different side of my voice so after knowing somebody for so long you get you do you get to know everything about them and what their strengths are and what their what their weaknesses are and he knows how to accentuate the, the positive stuff <laughs> so it's, it's, but he does that with everybody he works with not just right. me it's whoever has an opportunity to be at saturation acres or on a stage he just he's great like that yeah, I mean, he's recorded that kind of stuff, but he's also done like bands like Grace's Downfall, right. stuff like just the total opposite end of the, the yeah. rock spectrum and stuff, and and still, you know, it, it all sounds great in its own way. You know? Yeah, there's a certain um, there's a certain warmth that he is able to capture down at Saturation Acres, and and I very recently had just gotten to know his partner of thirty more than thirty years, I'm sure, hmm. his partner Paul Smith that he started, he founded Saturation Acres with when it was down in Danville. And I and Paul mastered the LP, and they're both just, you, they've been friends for life, and you can totally see that in their working environment and just the way they treat each other. And there's just this constant mutual respect for whoever walks in, whoever's there, and it's, it's always fun and hmm. lighthearted. But then when it's time to work, you work. And then we celebrate after you know we listen to it and crack open like maker's mark or something like that and yeah. drink some jersey juice. yeah you jersey know, juice yeah whatever, whatever you got so we're here tonight <laughs> celebrating this this beautiful thing that that we've done so and you know my name is on the front of that but i mean you read the liner notes of that and there are so many people hmm. that were part of making these 10 years a possibility i couldn't have done it without any i mean it, it really does take a village it really does I mean, I may be a solo artist on paper, but there's nothing solo about this job. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> nothing at all. I mean, y- you guys had to set this up. I mean, there's... And you do what you do with with this beautiful podcast magazine. And everybody plays their part. And so, as a musician, I think I speak for all of us. I mean, I'm just so grateful for this area, this little this little niche that we have going on. Yeah, we were talking a little bit uh, before we started. Uh, you, you know, you you moved a little bit out of the area, but you're still in Pennsylvania. <laughs> still in Pennsylvania. And, yeah. and so it made you kind of almost appreciate uh, what we have here even more because we sure. have such a, a, a cool array of musicians. And you know what? I, I think people who around here take that for granted that other places are like that. And there's just so many places that aren't that yeah, don't have this level of it, talent. It's very rare and like like we were speaking earlier, when you have an opportunity to widen that lens and really get to look at Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, it is, it's absolutely astounding. 
the amount of talent that's here. Right. And everybody is slaying their craft. I mean, whether it's rock, whether it's scream metal, whether it's whatever it is, folk, um, whatever it is, every everybody's doing well. Mm-hmm. And so, and the, the proof is in your magazine. The proof is in you know what's being written. And it, I miss it. I, mm-hmm. So it's nice to come back and be able to do this. <laughs> cool, especially with somebody like you. So. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So what 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 was it that that uh, spoke to you about uh, blues music and roots music? It, you know, it's it's a it's a genre that obviously has a, a deep history, mm. uh, especially a deep American history, and but it doesn't um, always get appreciated today. You know, it kind of I, I think gets uh, not necessarily overlooked, but almost kind of put to the side a little bit. Like, oh, you know, we have blues festivals and here's blues shows here and there. There are some blue club, blues clubs still around. Uh, but it's not as prominent as it was. You, you can't really turn on mainstream radio and hear that kind of stuff anymore. So what was it about it that kind of spoke to you? Well, I, you know, just as music in general and the arts picked me, I think the blues also picked me. You know, <laughs> I, you know and it's very unassuming. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, this body making those... <laughs> noises like it makes no it, it really does it and I you know I still kind of laugh and go what but <laughs> but in, but as odd as that is this seems so natural mm-hmm. like I don't you know like I'm not going to wake up next week and be in pre-production to work on an opera mm. album I mean never say never but <laughs> right. the chances are very slim <laughs> so I think for me it was about paying attention to what my voice can do and also what it can't do mm. and not to stretch it and not to not to try to go too far out of my out of my wheelhouse and it's a great wheelhouse so I don't <laughs> mind I don't mind staying in it but the thing about what I do I, I think they categorize me as roots rock sure um, I kind of like that because there's a little bit of all genre in that ty- in that label so you know, I grew up listening to 70s, 80s, 90s. So, I mean, one of my, well, I, st- I started, when I started listening to music and sort of honing my tribe, as I spoke with, spoke <laughs> about earlier, it was primarily uh, female musicians and female fronted bands. And then slowly the, the male voices started coming. Bill Withers, mm-hmm. um, my God, Al Green. And... Just the just these warm voices and these positive spirits. Like Bill Withers is a guy that I would love to have lunch with. Like he just <laughs> seems like like he just seems like a cool guy. And um, his music reached the masses. And then one day he said, "You know what? I'm done. <laughs> I've done it, and I I want to go back to being like a guy." And so I like that he chose his terms. And, you know, I, I'm kind of doing that myself. And so, but I think just listening to what my voice can do and then listening to his voice and then a huge influence growing up, of course, is Annie Lennox. That, mm-hmm. that deep, rich, just, oh my gosh, just booming. And then from her, I discovered uh, Miss Nina Simone. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Jeff Buckley and, and voices like that. And then... I just started putting the pieces together and well, what can N do now that he's heard the voices that he likes right. and like brings him comfort. Now what what's Ed gonna do with what's going on up here? Because I remember my sister Don saying to me one day years ago, she said, Well, you have a really good writing ability. What are you gonna do with it? At this point I wasn't singing yet and she was looking at some of my poetry and things and she said this is beautiful work mm-hmm. but if you're not doing it for, for other people to see you or experience it it's you're wasting it right. so it was kind of like she kind of little a little bit of a fire like get busy <laughs> so that's when I was like mm, I'm gonna give Brett a shot and so you know but it just it all seems so natural looking back that it totally makes sense that I'm here right now sitting with you. Like, it, <laughs> there's no big moment that hit, or I didn't have 
some sort of epiphany. Like, right. it just seemed very, like, it was a slow moving current and I just, I just went with it rather than fight it or question it. I'm like, well, let's, let's do this. And that's the cool thing about working with Brett. He's never officially said no to anything that I've suggested. Mm. He said, well, let's try it. Let's see. It's never been a full on no, like, I won't do that. I won't go to that genre. I won't. So having somebody like that in your back pocket is very cool because <laughs> I can just call him up and, you know, you know somebody that long and there's no fear anymore of, I mean, I have to admit, initially, like sitting at satur sat Saturation Acres, I was nervous because you want to, especially those first couple of sessions, you want to do the best job that you can with right. this man <laughs> at your disposal. So, you know, and then you just... I didn't, I didn't rush anything. I wasn't on a, a label. Nobody was calling me saying, we need a hit single. You know, there was no pressure. So we just, we made these records for us. I mean, at the end of the day, we made these records for the two of us, <laughs> honestly. The two of us first, and then whoever, it's whoever like gravitates t towards it and needs it for comfort or you know, the big moments of your life, the, your births, your deaths, those big moments. So, I mean, at the end of the day, music belongs to everybody. And once these are out there, like, in the world, I, I can't control sure. who likes it, who doesn't, <laughs> you know. I, I hope you guys love this stuff, but, uh, and I know you do, because I, I feel the support every day, and I'm very interactive on Facebook, and mm -hmm. it's just, I'm so humbled by what this area has has done for me. You folks have um, given me a great platform. So, so uh, Speaking of which, uh, our own Jason Reed Miller uh, did a review of this that we published a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Uh, so I, I always kind of wonder, you know, uh, being from the perspective of the guy who, like, listens to this stuff and writes about this stuff and interviews people and, and that sort of thing, I'm on that end of it. Uh, I'm always curious, what does the artist think when they read this stuff back? Or, or, you know, so you're reading this review, you're looking at it, and you're, are you going like, oh, yeah, that's totally dead on, or like, oh, that's not how I interpret it, but sure, okay, if that's your perspective. You know, like, how did, how did you react when you, you well, read that? Well, I, <laughs> I mean, you and I both know Jason, so... We do, we do. Of course, I start this conversation with a bit of a chuckle because Jason <laughs> is... I'll tell you what, Jason shot my my third uh, the third album's uh, cover, mm -hmm. and our our friendship came about um, where it was suggested to me for the third album that I start putting my face with my work because mm -hmm. people wanted to know who Ed was, and I thought, oh man. I hate getting my photo taken. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do. Like you, I, you and me both. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, you're so photogenic," and I'm just like, "Well, that may be, but it's." <laughs> I don't know. I always felt like, and for, forgive me, but I never. I don't know. I always felt like. I never wanted the disability, the the cerebral palsy, to show up. So I always, sure, sure. I always wanted to keep, the music about the music, mm -hmm. and less about Ed. But then right. people were like, but the, the music is you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess you're right. So, so I don't know, twist my arm. I, uh, so I, I, I met Jason, and I, I went up to Scranton, and it was, I remember it was hot as balls. <laughs> I, I remember going to his place, and I, I, I don't know, I took the bus or whatever, and I'm sweating, and he goes, he goes, I couldn't, I couldn't come and got you. You're all sweaty or whatever. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, oh, this photo shoot's going to suck. I'm like wet and disgusting. So <laughs> we get there, and I was so nervous because I was like, I don't want to be, like, shown below the waist. Like, mm -hmm. And he, he just, and you know how blunt he, he, he's just. Oh, yeah, he's straight to the he's, point. <laughs> like, no, no, no giggles, just, like, right to the point, right? So yeah. he's like, look it, you do you. And let me do my job. I have you. Nothing bad's going to happen. And it's true. I mean, and 45 minutes later, he's like, get out. You know, it's like one of those, oh, you're yeah. done. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And, and then, you know, a couple of days later, 
he showed me these these amazing shots and I had my friend Dorothy Saunders help me pick the cover because she's a brilliant artist and I feel like and she knows anatomy really well so she I said you know me for 20 plus years you pick the shot and so she did and still to this day people are like that that cover shot's awesome you know your hair and everything. but I mean Jason's great and I don't even know what the original question was <laughs> but uh <laughs> But, uh, oh, yeah, the article. And I, when he said that, he, when I saw that he wrote the article, I thought, oh, man, like, he's so blunt. And, you know, in this current political climate. Sure. Like, oh, what is this article? You know, how is this going to play out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I read it, and I, I was nodding all the way through. I'm like, yeah, cool. cool. I, I, mm. I even appreciated, like, the political side that he did. And yeah, there was a little bit of a, an introduction that, that talked about, uh, you know, all of the stuff that's going on currently in the area mm. uh, that's, uh, you know, anti-LGBT and all that kind of stuff and how mm. maybe this is the record. I think that's how he introduced it is this is the record we need right yeah. now, you know, in that yeah. kind of climate. Uh, that that puts somebody out out in front that's you know proud about that yeah. uh, about your sexuality and uh, that's something that I think a lot of I've even seen you know I've seen a lot of interviews with you obviously I do a lot of research before we sit down and people are afraid to kind of broach those subjects and talk about that kind of thing yeah. but it's not something that you really stray from or like you know worry about what people think well I, I mean I used to I used to you know it used to be oh let's just talk about the songs sure but that that's only an interview that's so long. You can only talk about a song so much. <laughs> sure. So then I realized all these facets, you know, LGBT and um, the, the physical challenges I was, you know, born with. I mean, that's all part of the story. That's all part of what's on the LP. That's all part of what mm. me, get up, me getting up on stage and people watching me perform with my body, using my body. So I, I finally, like, got to a point, And I think when I hit 40... Recently, it was kind of like, eh. <laughs> what, whatever. I mean, this is this is my second act of my life. Like, I, I don't really right? what anybody else thinks of my work outwardly, or I. It's none of my business. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't want anybody, you know, trashing me or whatever like that. But sure, I I don't think people on a whole are too concerned about what you're doing because they're worried about themselves. Right. So I, I figured, you know, do your thing, do your craft, be, you know, be the artist, be the craftsman, whatever your, um, whatever your outlet is, and just be great at it and slay everything and <laughs> and accomplish your goals, and people will people will see what you're doing. Sure. So um, I just feel like, like I said earlier, you know, no question is off limits. I mean. I'm really, I mean, it, we are we are approaching the end of Pride Month actually right now, yeah. um, and I believe t tonight or tomorrow is the exact um, anniversary of the Stonewall riots that happened 50 years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm very aware of who brought me up, and you know, I'm I'm aware of the privilege to sit here with you today and and not be cast aside. Um, this is a pretty embracing valley, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, uh, from what I see, I think there's there's tremendous acceptance. I mean, right now we're dealing we're dealing with um, forty five right now, who's setting the example, and you know maybe that's trickling down a sure. little bit, and people are looking to him, which which isn't great. But um, I don't know. I tend to accentuate the positive and what's going on and things like this are happening and and you know people are flourishing in what they're doing and coming home for a few days I see what's going on here still and I'm like I'm still proud to be from here sure you know I was never somebody who thought oh I can't wait to leave northeast Pennsylvania I've got to get out absolutely not this is my this is my home my family's here so when I get to come back and promote my work or our work, um, it's an absolute pleasure to do this with cerebral palsy. 
with being a gay man. It's like, here I am. And the ultimate goal is, you know, put my record on mm. in, you know, in your, in the privacy of your home at your next cookout or whatever. And, and reach out and grab somebody that you love and <laughs> boogie around your kitchen. I mean, that, that's really the goal. I mean, yeah. and have some, have some Jersey juice while you're right, at it. Right. There you go. I mean, that's, that's really, that's really why, I, why I do this is to reach the people, you know, so we're, we're talking to folks tonight and, um, you know, tomorrow I will have a dialogue with that audience too. That's very specific to them. Right. That goes on. So um, I, I don't get to play out as often as I did. And, you know, that, that makes me sad. But uh, I think I appreciate it a little bit more. Because uh, I'm not a musician that tours. Mm. I, I wish I was. But logistically, that's not possible right now. So when I get to come back and, and do a show with Brad or um, Dustin Douglas or Rob and Tim Husty, mm. um, it's it's that much more of a privilege to, to have a conversation because you know it's only going to last two hours and then it's over and then you go your separate ways and, you know, <laughs> hope for the next gig, you know what I mean? Sure. So you just, I think getting older, I've learned to appreciate what's happening mm-hmm. in the moment. So. Well, in, we, I think we have a very uh, uh, forward-thinking, progressive, uh, beautiful art scene that... Uh, doesn't look at any of that as uh, any sort of uh, modifier at all. You know, they're just they're just looking at you as an artist. Mm-hmm. Period. You know, I think we ha- we do have a, a dark side to the valley. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there's there's you, you know, right up the street, there's an arena full of people that campaign for 45. You know, we're we're there cheering them on. You know, mm-hmm. and and uh, and the state turned for him. And a, lar- a large part of our area was a reason for that. So, you know, there's there's a part of it that is is scary. And I think, uh, you know, this is something that that I believe. And and you know, people who are maybe of a certain privilege don't understand this, but representation matters. Mm. Uh, and and I think that uh, you know, you being out and proud, I think makes pe- you know other other people who are maybe struggling with that, who maybe are facing that, whether it's in their family or they feel by the general public that they're cast aside or looked at in a certain way, um, you know, you're representing in a way without even really trying per se, but you're also, you know, you're on your social media, you're out and proud, and, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's important. You know, some you can read into the music if you want, or you could just kind of listen to it and just, you know, take it as it is. You know? I mean, I, I smile right now because there's one of the singles uh, that's that's on the LP, I Need a Woman. Mm-hmm. When that first came out and... and uh, <laughs> I'm sure and, some people were like, what? And, what and, do you mean? <laughs> and, and you, Rich, you premiered it. Yes, um, that's right. That that summer in 2015. So yeah, yeah. when that came out, people were like, wait, <laughs> what? And people that knew me, they're like, you're confused. It. So when I when I had when I explained it, they were like, "Oh, that's deep. Mm. Like you're deep." And I was like, "Well, yeah. Like <laughs> you know, I mean, at, at the deepest part of myself, I'm still a two year old boy. But I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm also like I have that other side that's that's dark. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think to have darkness, you need you need you need both. Absolutely. To have a balance, and I I try to. I think that comes off in the music. I think there's tremendous darkness, but then there's that beautiful resolution that happens in, in the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and that should happen with all of our lives. I think you spoke earlier about representation. I think we all represent what we are, and we all are an example. So, like, my example, it, it's so strange to talk about it because. And my point to that is, peop- I, I run into this a lot where people will say to me, oh, you know, you're so inspirational. And I struggle with that. Mm. Because I'm just, I'm just living. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But I used to, I struggled with it. But then I, you know, if somebody... If somebody finds me inspirational, or if somebody finds you inspirational, 
or whoever's joining us tonight, if someone finds you inspirational, let them. I mean, hmm. we need more of that, don't we? I mean, absolutely. <laughs> if somebody's inspiring you, let it let it be that, and don't like. I used to try to fight it, like, oh, I'm not inspiring. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my thing, and I, you know, who am I to take someone's joy away? Hmm. And so, I I stopped doing that, and I just just streamlined my thinking and you know just just do you like sure every time I walk into walk onto a stage or walk into a room I'm just trying to be the best representation of Ed <laughs> and you know at this point in my life it's it's Ed Randazzo there's no one without the other they both go together right and that was that was weird too because growing up it was like it was Eddie you know <laughs> as a little kid and yeah and now it's Ed Randazzo, and that was a little odd to get used to because there's you can't have Ed without Randazzo now. <laughs> and so it's it's that whole package that comes. And so, but the cool thing when when I'm hired with Brett or whatever, people know what they're gonna get, hmm. and they're excited about it. And so we we try to we try to do good things with our time with our audiences, and I try to make. I try to make good with the social media platform and try to be positive on it. Yeah. Um, it's it's difficult sometimes. Oh, it, it's but, absolutely difficult. But I try to... Um, I don't know. I've always tried to accentuate what's what's working and what's not. I, I just don't... If it doesn't serve me anymore, I don't, I don't access it anymore. Well, um, that, that's something that I think a lot of, uh, you know... Uh, Looking at it from from my perspective, uh, you know, any PA scene uh, struggles with that all the time, because we're one of the few media outlets uh, around here and even nationally that really tries to focus on the positive 99% of the time. Yeah. You know, we do, we do cover the other side of stuff. Uh, you know, here and there, we've had those discussions on on this couch, and and we've had those discussions on the site. But for the most part, we really try to, because the so many media outlets are so focused on the negative, we try to focus on the positive and all the cool people doing cool shit in the area, putting out great stuff that people need to check out that goes underappreciated because the headline grabbers are the negative stuff. Whenever we post something that is negative, that gets the most reactions, it gets the most comments, it gets the most shares. So the, the natural inclination is, okay, we'll just do that all the time and then we'll, we'll, we'll be super popular. The, the, the hard thing is actually to be positive in a negative world, uh, to, fo to, to, to constantly face those types of stuff and go, well, yeah, but there's this side to it too. Yeah. There's a good side to things as well. I mean, we need to focus on that. I have my days. I mean, some days I wake up and go, you know what? <laughs> Server policy is not working with my outfit today. <laughs> like, it's just not. <laughs> but you just, you keep going. And, you know, I, I just made this big move to Erie mm -hmm. uh, with my fiance. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun new role to be in. You know, I never thought it would happen, but <laughs> here we are. But, you know, I, uh, you know, that was, that's a huge change. And so I'm still, like, experiencing the, the waves of that. And I had friends tell me, you're going to be sad for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're right. Yeah. Because you, I mean, this was my, and still is, very much my, my roots. And mm -hmm. that, that, that it takes a village that, that propped me up and said, here's a new artist. Check them out, you know. Yeah. And not having access to you folks as I used to it's it's such a strange mm. thing and um, so yeah I'm so to, like I said to come home it's like oh okay <laughs> because, <laughs> I, I know I know where I'm at because <laughs> I'm still you know it's jarring still sure well, you're still on our radar. We'll, we're still watching what you're doing, so yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be more to come. This is just the beginning of what you, what you're doing. Well, I, the, I can't imagine that you're going to stop now. Well, th this does really does feel like a springboard, mm -hmm. and even for my friends in Erie, where this record became my debut mm -hmm. for them, so it it really is a like, 
what's he going to do next? And that's what's cool about the title. Right. Because that title is, you know, uh, there, there's a namesake on the record as well, but uh, that title is open-ended, and it always will be, because I'm always evolving. So I will always ask who that man is. <laughs> it's just, who's that man in 2019? And then right. 10 years from now, who is he, who is he now? So I'm always going to be asking that. And that's that wasn't the catalyst of me choosing that title. It just mm-hmm. it just wor- it just worked and it was I love the song, you know, it's one of those songs. I don't write a lot of like joyful stuff. <laughs> so I thought I'm going to name this thing who, who does? <laughs> after something joyful. Mm-hmm. Um, but and so yeah, th- this just represents kind of like where I'm at now and I've always really loved when an artist put out package like that because you knew among their hits there there'd be like three new things that were, that was exclusive to this and you could only get those tracks here right. and so I tried I tried to do that and have it be collector kind of vibe so I think we well I know we accomplished it because it's doing well and I think everybody that's purchased it and spit you're probably spinning it now and yeah. uh, I appreciate it and for those of you who don't have it there, you know, it's out there. Joan Ardone is carrying it. Musical Energy around the corner yes. has it as well. And um, all this month for Pride Month, all of my physical music releases are fifty percent off. So, because I figured, you know, I'm being gay is part of my story. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to bring my story and weave it, you know, into my daily life, into the music. You know, but I never, I don't want any one part of me to overtake another part because I'm sure a whole person, just like we all are. Yeah, so. I mean, it, one one part of you doesn't define you, right? You know, and as an artist, the great thing about being an artist is you get to define who you are through yeah, your music. That's great. You know, <laughs> you you get to dis, you get to tell people this is who I am, yeah. uh, in 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 a in a way that. Can, can be, you know, interpreted and felt in different ways, but at the end of the day, you're the one saying, this is this is who I am, which, you know, it plays to the title perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm really, really proud. They always say, you know, you're most proud of what your current work is. Yeah. Um, I'm really proud of this package, and it it's it's sharp looking, it sounds great, so. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's the whole package for sure. It's, what uh let's let's talk about well, there's a lot there's a lot of chatter going on down there, there. is so let's let's get oh mm. oh uh, mr reed miller uh, you know of, of course we talk about him i'm sure his ears were ringing uh I'm can surprised. i can i have that shirt uh no i'm surprised he didn't bust down the door and like <laughs> tackle me you know sometimes he'll just kind of invite himself <laughs> a lot of times he'll just be like you know what I, i'm just gonna i'm just gonna show up well, so you know i'm what? surprised he didn't I, come tonight I, actually I, i'm a little shocked myself <laughs> <laughs> um Let's see. Kurt says, uh, "Wow, Eddie, you've come a long way since I met you years ago. Congratulations." Thanks, buddy. Uh, Bill Norton says, uh, "You find what you seek, Ed. Never stop looking for the positive. That's that's good." Uh, Billy. Let's see. Uh, Renee uh, De Pascal says, uh, "You look great, uh, babe." Uh, Todd, uh, t- I'm not even going to try to butcher your poor name there. Uh, Todd is proud of you. Oh, Todd. Hot toddy. Uh, Carl's loving this. And, um, you know, uh, JC, who uh, is is uh, in the amazing band Bandana Brothers, uh, which should not be overlooked. Uh, they were in our finals at, at, the, at the open mic. Great band from the Poconos. We hope to see them again in the fall. But... Uh, they're they're uh, they're an up and comer. Uh, I'd like I'd like to maybe have them on the show at some point. Uh, but he says uh, audiences uh, sad but true. Audiences love a car crash. Good job on focusing on the positive. And that's that's really what we're all about. You know, that's what the show's about. Yeah. That's what the website's about. Um, because that other stuff gets ignored too much, you know, unfortunately. Or you know, I I think now that you have media companies around here are much like media companies across the country are cutting back. Uh, more and more, the first thing to go is always the arts. Mm. Uh, the first thing out of our schools was the arts, yep. and the first thing out of our media is the arts and the positive stuff because uh, you know uh, uh, shootings and, and everything else sells papers. 
Uh, horrible things sell papers, so that's that's what we're going to focus on. Yeah. And that's what we're going to focus our staff on. So those people either get laid off or it's like, ah, yeah, if you could fit an art story in there, uh, then, then great. Or, you know, you have, uh, uh, you know, websites coming in that are trying to copy what we do and the success that we have um, because they can't come up with an original idea. No names mentioned, but I think you know who you are. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but there there's some people out there who who maybe can't come up with their own ideas their own formats and, and unfortunately try to you know copy our success but we're not going anywhere I mean, we'll be we'll be here five years in september and well, congratulations uh, to you as well. thank thank you and i'm excited for uh for many more after that so uh we're not we're not going anywhere despite where what some people might want us to do <laughs> where my, people want us to go um, but you know, uh, you you, you, t- you talked a little bit about your uh, uh, cerebral palsy. How has that af- has that affected your work at all in, in terms of uh, you know getting out there and performing shows and, and also the, the, the mm. stuff that's on the recorded album? You know what I? It's so strange because for the most part, I forget that I even live with it. Mm. Because well, I, it's your whole life. It's I'm been just your whole life. I'm just being me and so Mm -hmm. the only time I really notice it is you know in a mirror or that kind of thing or being on video which I which you know 10 years ago I would have never agreed to this sit down because I would have been (laughs) like no but I mean I'm at at a point where like you know obviously there's a bunch of chatter down there right now of Mm -hmm. of friends of mine uh, you know really enjoying what we're doing so it's like people people love you and they want to see you do well so I don't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not that, that embarrassed anymore. But as far as the the, the physical challenges, yes, I, yes, I have challenges, absolutely. But um, I think when people, when when I when I walk on stage and before I even begin to sing, I love that reaction because people don't expect it because they see this quote frail person that maybe looks a little bit unstable and then. When I get centered and and begin, people are very taken with it. So it's powerful to me, and it it's it's bigger than myself. And I just I open up, and by the end of the show, I I have forgotten that there there were people there, hmm. and then the applause comes, and I'm like, oh yeah, like wh- <laughs> where, where where did I where did I just go for a second? Yeah. But I I think people dare I use the uh, the term inspired. I mean, I'm inspired when I see my favorite artist play. Hmm. So how could I deny somebody else and say, you know, you can't be inspired by me? <laughs> right. Well, who, I can't. I can't tell you <laughs> how to feel because I mean, I go to. I mean, I haven't been to. I haven't been to a show in a while, but you know, I see a good friend of mine, um, Alexis P. Suter from Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I mean. I've seen her countless times. I'm inspired every time I see that band mm. play. I, I go into cardiac arrest because they <laughs> just, you know, I literally, my mouth is hanging open going, how is this happening and how am I lucky <laughs> enough to see it? Yeah. So I'm inspired by them. I'm inspired by, you know, I mean, I won the lottery. I'm alive. You're mm. alive. Sure. So, I mean, be inspired. You know, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> done with that, you know, being all like, I'm not an inspiration. If whatever you want me to be, that's up to you. <laughs> that's, so, I, I'm just rolling with it now. But, you know, much like music in general, where uh, you know you you put out a song, you know you record something, you put your emotions into it, and you put it out there for the world, and people are going to interpret that how they want to interpret it. Mm-hmm. You can't control how people think or feel about something or you know they might get something out of it that you know a lot of a lot of musicians a lot of times don't want to talk about the inspiration behind their songs Mm -hmm. because they they don't want to ruin it for people who are like well i thought it was about my ex-girlfriend or my ex-boyfriend or or you know my uh you know uh, my my struggles or my pain uh, it's about you know uh, something that has nothing to do with that, and now the song is is kind of spoiled for me. Which I'm still kind of curious about that kind of thing, but it doesn't spoil it for me because I'm gonna feel how I want to feel about it. But I can understand why artists feel that way, and they don't want to like get into that stuff too too much. <laughs> well, I mean, 
I mean, I, I love music, like, ri ridiculously um, and obsessively. So, And I'm somebody who seeks out the the story or the background on a song. I Especially with somebody like Tori Amos, mm. who, who is very cryptic, cryptic in her writing. Yeah. And you have to you have to dig deeper and sometimes you need her help to say well th this was this and I love that because then it's then I have a deeper root of the song and so I'll I'll turn the questions over over to you is there a peace of mind that that you're curious about hmm. that you didn't know that you're like oh what's that song about do you have any of mine that come to mind that maybe that you want to ask about the the story or the inspiration? Sure. Well, you know what? There's, uh, I mean, you know, there, there's some that are your original stuff, and then there's also like your interpretations right. uh, of things as well. Like, like "Be My Husband," of course, stands out, um, especially for a, a male vocalist to tackle it. Yeah. And uh, and that's I think one of the reasons that you know Jason kind of interpreted you know in, in the way that he did in his review. Um, you know, that, that definitely stood out and it, it, you know, like, like, uh, we were talking about, I need a woman before, you yeah. know, that kind of stands just, just opposed <laughs> to that in a way. But, you know, I think that's the, the fun and playfulness of being an artist because but then it the you know, makes you think about The interesting things. thing about I need a woman standing next to be my husband is mm. I need a woman is written about Nina Simone. <laughs> so they, they are related. You know right. I mean? And that, that was very purposeful. <laughs> you know, I don't do anything by accident, folks. Nothing. <laughs> it's, there's there's always a reason. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think. Well, the thing about my songs, I think they're really straightforward. Mm. I don't think there's any kind of cryptic. Uh, I think they are what they are, and right. my, my job is to just tell the story. Hmm. You know, of of that person. Um, sometimes I like to write from the third person because I I love I love the humanness of. Of folks and I think for me um, a work song is one of the songs that that I wrote that is sort of uh, the ode to the blue collar vibe of that that was one, that was definitely one I wanted to ask you about I, I think it it yeah. totally uh, you know I could see it like it, a lot of times when I listen to music I can almost picture like a music video in my head, uh, you know, which I, th I think a lot of people kind of have that, uh, you know, uh, uh, experience. And you just think of like local history, uh, mm -hmm. very much so. You know, the like the album cover, of course, speaks to that as well. You know, with the the coal miners and stuff and in there. That photo is actually taken in Wilkesbury. Oh, really? It's from here. So yeah, so I mean, it fits perfectly. Yeah, it was it was a very purposeful. Um, decision to have that on the cover and it's interesting like going back to like how people interpret what you're doing mm -hmm. I remember when that cover was first released and we didn't like press anything yet I just wanted to show the artwork yeah my pal do you know Tony Halchek yes yes, yes. Uh, we, we've uh, we've we've featured him a few times Tony uh, has worked with Brett and myself for the last 10 years as well so we're very much a trio mm -hmm. um, and Tony kind of takes the sound and puts it into a, a visual interpretation and he's worked with me uh, from day one and he I, I didn't even give him an idea he <laughs> ran with it and font and color and everything like that and so that was all him but the thing I loved about the front is when the when the cover first came out people were saying to me oh you know someone said well, you're highlighting child labor and I'm just like <laughs> what? I'm like <laughs> that's such a that's such a Facebook complaint. I'm like <laughs> I'm highlighting child labor. <laughs> but you do realize that that was part of our history. Absolutely. And at that time, mm -hmm. it wasn't that was what people did. It was it was necessity. That's mm -hmm. how that's how life was. Right. So I wanted to I wanted to purposely um, connect Wilkesbury to these songs mm -hmm. and have it be, you know, I wanted, when you picked this up, I wanted people to be like, well, it's from Wilkesbury. It's obviously a coal mining town. Like, I, you know, right. you can, if you, if you're a music lover and you study artwork and you read liner notes, 
you'll very quickly figure out mm. a little bit of who that man is. <laughs> right. I think so. Absolutely. I think we did. Well, you know, you know, the, that that's uh, that's something that drives me crazy, just on a on a personal level. Uh, you know, people trying to rewrite history by pretending bad things didn't happen. Yeah. You know, that drive, like, especially in this political climate, like, uh, you know, you see a lot of stuff now where we're, we're just uh, uh, eliminating, uh, you know, Nazis from, from the, the whole, uh, oh, well, people can feel how they want to feel and people can, you know, people can express their own uh, political, no, when did it become like, you know, I grew up as a kid, the Nazis were the bad guys. Uh, you know, m- maybe historically we, we we got into the war a little bit late, but at the end of the day, like you know, us and like the Europeans and, and everybody were the heroes and, and, and beat the Nazis back, and now it's like, well, we should accept their belief. No, Nazis are bad guys. They're always bad guys. That's just the way it is. Yeah. I don't understand where, when it when it became like a thing where we can't show swastikas and we can't talk about you know bad things that happen. Yeah, In I- the same way, we what well, we can't talk about that. Yeah, okay, uh, the, the area was, I mean, you know, stripped to its bones yeah. uh, by uh, the, the coal barons and stuff in the area. But if we forget that, we forget that industry, you know, took as much as it gave from this area, I mean, who are we as a people? Then? Yeah, you can't, I mean, if, you, if, we don't, if we don't investigate our history and find out where we've come from, we're, ne- we're never going to know where we're going. Mm-hmm. And we're going to follow... You know what the masses are telling us, rather than what really happened. That's why this whole idea of whitewashing yes. everything these days, oh, taking out you know explicit content because somebody in the theater might be offended by it. Well, <laughs> right? Don't go, don't go to see the film then. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Come on, you know stuff. Life is look, life is dirty and life is life is rough and stuff happened, but we have to see it. We have to expose ourselves to it and not be afraid, because we're not going to move forward. Right. So I think, as a, as an artist, we have to, we, as artists especially, we have to challenge folks. Like, you know, this may be uncomfortable, but you know, <laughs> I mean, this is. I wanted the dialogue to happen. Right. And. It happened even before the record was even pressed. And people were already like, well, the cover's too dark, and you should put your face on it. I'm just like, I don't want to put my face on it. <laughs> like, you know, again, back to, well, I was very I was very inspired always by the record artwork of specifically 10,000 Maniacs. I loved mm-hmm. how they had social commentary on their covers. And it was always, you'd always have to do research on the cover. Well, who took the photo? Where is the photo taken? And so I, I'm a big nerd, so I'd get lost in that stuff. And I wanted people to be able to get lost in my work too. Like mm-hmm. put this record on and then you know read everything, sit in your favorite chair, get your Jersey juice, <laughs> and have, a, yeah, have an experience because we, in this time right now, folks' attention spans are so limited to like 15 minutes at a pop, you sure. know? And so they're like, well, after 15 minutes, I'm bored. <laughs> really? So it's, but that's, we are, like, everything is fast paced and 24 hour news. And, you know, we're saturated with, with so much. So to be able to put a piece of music out and collect it like this and sort of slow people down for a moment, hmm. hey, take a moment and listen to this. And I think that's what Jason's point was with the article like Hmm. let's silence the static and let's put some music on and dance for a moment sure (laughs) and I I think that's why I I love that article and uh, I don't know I just I love music for that reason anyway because I I like to go into that bubble and just get lost for 45 minutes at a time and uh, to be able to be on stage and do it in a live setting is even that's amazing. <laughs> and then because people are depending on you to take them someplace. Mm. Oh, I just lost my job last week. Oh, the furnace broke. My, my child has an illness or whatever it is. And for that 90 minutes, you're, they're depending on you to take them someplace. Mm. And growing up, I depended on music that way. 
you know, take me, show me where you're going. I want to go to. And so I never thought in a million years I'd be in the position of, of, you know, where the roles are reversed. But again, here we are. <laughs> and I'm, I'm humbled by it, really. That's good. So. I, I'm, and I'm, I'm glad you're still at it. You have a show coming up uh, with Brett uh, this, this Friday, June 28th, at A Perfect Blend in Berwick. Uh, what what uh, what do you have uh, planned for that show? Or oh, I'm, obviously I'm sure we're going to hear some songs from, from yeah, this, this record. That is the that's the centerpiece. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like another you know celebration. You know that continuing you know celebration of ten years. And I, I don't want it to end, but it'll end at some <laughs> point. I'm sure. Like all right, Ed, get on to the next thing. But yeah. right now everybody's everybody's pretty enamored with this, and I, I'm. I'm happy, but the Destination Blues, we had we had played it as a duo back in February, and they invited us back for an encore, and mm-hmm. originally it was supposed to take place in December, but you folks had some bad weather at, oh, that, yes. at that time, <laughs> and I had flown in despite, I had gotten here because I thought, well, it's your job, you have to show up, so I, I flew in, and... Mm-hmm. I got here, and then that night, they're like, well, you know, we all met, you know, and, and like, oh, it's, it's just not safe, and I, I, I don't want to put anybody at, at risk, and at that point, we, this whole state was declared a state of emergency, so. <laughs> yeah. So, this is the makeup date of okay. that performance, and so, I'm told that A Perfect Blend is, is quite intimate, probably the smallest venue I will ever play, mm. and so, for those of you who are thinking about joining us, I would arrive early um, because it'll end up being standing room only, I'm sure. Mm. But primarily acoustic. Um, there are two sets with an intermission. And I kind of, um, I like to tell a story. I like to tell two separate arcs of, of a single man. So you'll have to show up tomorrow and see what <laughs> happens. But yeah, I, I met with Brett last night. We had a little bit of a little bit of a rehearsal because we hadn't played in a, in a bit so and I was nervous I'm like Whoa, you know but <laughs> just like riding a bike <laughs> so, so we're, we're excited and I, I I'm just excited to be home and see everybody and there's some people coming tomorrow and it feels very like oh it's home you know it's yeah it's it's nice well, you know, you, you've got a, a voice that I think stands out uh, amongst the crowd too. You know, there's we've, we've talked a lot about uh, you know all the other great musicians that are in the area too, but uh, you know, don't doubt that you have your own voice as well. You know, you you definitely stand out amongst the crowd and and do your own thing, and I think that's so important to not follow trends. I remember when uh, you know bands like Breaking Ben came out of here. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're, they're still doing great things. Uh, but there was a lot of bands around that time who were like, oh, we just need to copy what they do. And then we're, we'll, we'll be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's cool. Like, it's cool to be inspired by, by people, especially people who are successful from this area. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, you need to find your own voice and do your own thing. And don't just, don't just copy, you know, what, what's come along and that kind of thing. And I think now is such a great time for, for us to be in the music scene and for us to, to listen to stuff because everything that I see coming out of here I mean there's literally every genre you can mm-hmm. imagine coming out of here and it's all great like it's all a great representation of that genre and also breaking down a lot of those conventions that uh, you know people put on stuff that it has to sound like this or it has to sound like that yeah. and uh, most of it are independent records like this where there isn't that pressure from a, a record company to say it has to sound like this mm-hmm. or that and you can just do what you want. And that's why we have some of this best art coming out of here. Well, I think being a musician, from a, I mean, I, I was in concert band in high school and I was in marching band. And I think, you know, now that I'm, uh, I'm pursuing music this way for the past 10 years, I think being a musician, it's just as important to be a good listener. And so I just simply... Um, listened to my voice and thought, well, is this music that I would put on my own stereo system? Mm -hmm. Would I listen to this? Of course I would. And I I mean, 
I don't actively. <laughs> but if I have to yeah. like revisit a song mm. to listen for, you know, cues or whatever, sure. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, you, you have to be proud of your work. I mean, why else wouldn't you? you know, of <laughs> course. Right. And when, but, but the icing on the cake is when other folks are also proud of what you're doing and they come up to you and, and I think there, there was, a, I, I don't know what gig it was, but I, I did a gig and we were, Brett and I were singing Ring Them Bells mm. and people were singing the words back to us. And I thought, that's so cool. Like when people ask for the original cuts, mm. like, oh, I want to hear Let Me Go or I want to hear Ring Them Bells. And it's like, really? Uh, okay. But I mean, it's, it's gratifying, so you keep, you just keep following that that song line, where, wherever it takes you. And so, we have more chatter. We have a, we have a couple uh, a couple other comments there. Yeah. Um, oh, Alex, Alexis, uh, says, uh-huh. uh, yes, baby, yes. Woohoo! Um, let's see, Todd, uh, Sam's favorite mine on the new album. Didn't it? Didn't it rain? <laughs> didn't it rain? Yeah, that's a good song. We, uh, Brett and I usually close with that one. Oh, okay. It, it, it rallies people, and people yeah. stand up and get a little crazy. Yeah. Tops come off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's the ultimate compliment right, right? there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Diana says, Ed, you're so yourself, don't ever change, and always remember where you came from. Uh, Todd says, first time I heard Ed sing, it was like, whoa, that dude's got soul. Uh, proud to know you. Mm. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> See, and, and that's that's one of the things that I love about what I get to do and, and what any PA scene gets to do as well. Because if this was like WNEP's page, it would be like horrible, nasty, racist, awful stuff most of the time. <laughs> you know, because that's what they that's what they, they profit on, unfortunately. Uh, but our audience is so cool and people just want to hang out and talk to artists and, and appreciate cool shit. So I appreciate you guys. And yeah, this, all these cool this is like I don't know. I feel like this is really chill, and I just feel like we're all hanging out tonight. That's that's what it's all about. That's what our our, our podcast is all about. Beautiful too. Thursday evening, absolutely in the <laughs> WB. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't even know it's Wilkes Barre because you know if if you, if you read anybody else, it's like oh, you have to duck and dodge from all the shots you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, all the all the people uh, you know begging for change and uh, you know horrible things going on here. But at the end of the day, it's like it's it's just like any other town, and you have to take the good with the bad and. and I think uh, overall, uh, you know, we have some pretty good good yeah. stuff going on here. This is a great, a great area. The whole, the whole stretch. I mean, because all these little towns, you know, you go from, you could fall asleep and go through ten little boroughs and oh yeah, not, totally. even, not even realize it. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool. So. But well, you get to represent little uh, West Pittston there. Oh, Not West Pittston, but West, West Pittston. Yeah. So, so that's cool, you know. And 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 uh, mm-hmm. you know, somebody from there who's like, hey, you know what? I didn't know anything, you know, cool came out of here. I mean, when I was a teenager, uh, growing up in West Scranton, I'm like, yeah, West Scranton, you know, Scranton's lame, you know, Scranton. Nothing, nothing cool happens in Scranton. And as I got older, it was like, oh, well, actually, there actually is a lot of cool well, stuff. And I. I blatantly ignored it. I, I think we all kind of go, oh, our little town is lame. But yeah. I remember like our mutual friend Joe Burke, Mr. Joe Burke. Yes. He's a, a, Wisp, a West Pittstonian. Yes, is he that, is. Is that correct? But he's <laughs> from there. And I, I was I was stoked when I found I'm like, oh, my God, West Pittston. And we, there was like this rejoicing, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> high five. And so, yeah, he's, oh, my God. he's. I saw him last night, too, at Tony's Wine Cellar. Mm-hmm. I stopped over. And he's just like, he's slaying it. With that record on uh, totally and he he got my copy of who's that man he loves it and so hey joe <laughs> um but yeah there's and we all like we all support each other mm-hmm. there's no competition it's like oh and we all go to each other's gigs and yeah hang out i love that that's that's the most important thing is to not treat it you know like uh it's a contest between everybody and even when we do like i get people all the time who are like why, why do you do the open mic as like a contest? Doesn't that, you know, make people mad? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're a little bitch about it, maybe, you know, but if, if, if you accept that, like, there's you know, gotta be something to look reach at, for. Look, look at Battle of the Bands, for example. Like, there's a reason that format has been around forever and people continue to do that because it draws people. And, like, I, I've, I've tried to do a regular open mic without that part of it. And 
we've maybe gotten a quarter of the people that we would get with that part of it. It's just that's there's something that drives people. I liked I like being able to reach for something, a mm. goal, you know. So. And I think that's I think that's part of it, you know. And yeah. and the people who and I've said this over and over, the people who benefit the most from like that from our open mic are the people who didn't really see it as a competition, didn't really care if they win or win or lose or anything like that. Uh, because it's all up to audience vote, and you, you never know like who who's gonna catch that favor. And same with the judges. Like I try to really randomize the judges so that they're people who have never seen these acts before, and you never know what you know they might have. They they all have some sort of stake in the arts, but they're not necessarily attached to one thing or another. Mm-hmm. So it's as fair as possible. But at the end of the day, like it, you just have to accept that you know people are gonna look at your stuff different ways and whatever. Do it for you. Do it because you want to do it. Yeah. And uh, and make friends along the way. The people who have benefited most from the open mic aren't the people who won most of the time. It's the people who uh, made friends at the mic, yeah. who met other musicians, who went on to form new bands and Duos. new shows. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. And uh, comedians and musicians who never talked really. And that's before. a. I, and now they're all hanging out together, and, and I'll go, go on each record. Shows. I'll go on record. That's a cool stage. It is. Up there. That's that's fun. That's you know? a cool like with the. I mean, the V Spot stage is really cool. <laughs> it is. It's, they got the full light show yeah. and everything. Uh, Vin, yeah, I mean, Vinny spent a good buck on that. You stuff. really feel like, like, ooh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rock star a little bit. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's cool. I played that stage a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, you've, mm. you've, you've been uh, with the with the Husty brothers. Uh, the Husty we want to give a shout out to those guys. Yeah, they're up well. at they're up at B Spot tonight. They are. Yeah, that's they right. Are. So uh, you know, I want I uh, we want to say shout out to them as well. Uh, and I, I I I wanted to ask you real quick before we wrap up here. Uh, you know, we we talked about you know uh, Rumble, collaborating are with we Brad done? And uh, yeah, we are actually. It, it moves real fast. It moves real fast. I mean, we're even over time, but I, I you know, it's, uh, I guess you know, time is relative. Uh, but you, um, you, you've uh, collaborated with those guys on stage a bunch of times oh, and yeah. stuff too. Why, why do you enjoy uh, working with those guys? Oh my god, they're they're crazy. Like their 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 use of harmony is like the is it the draw? Those mm-hmm. boys are masters at harmonizing and i mean we actually have i have um if you folks go to my website mm-hmm. com, i have a free web exclusive there it's an ep live from monk chunk opera house with the husties and it's four tracks we you know we narrowed it down to four and that that ep is ripping with those <laughs> with those kids so we had a blast and I don't know they're just like I met them in 2015 and that friendship was so swift it was like again I know you I get you and before I knew it we were in my living room very much like this just jamming (laughs) and we were like we should do some gigs together and I remember Brett saying to me he goes yeah I love that I love that you're like He's like, I'm not offended or whatever. He's like, I want you to go out and make money. I want you to be busy. So if you're going out with Dustin for a gig or, or you know, the Husky Brothers or whoever, make money. And so that just shows the support, the mutual support that we all have. Hmm. You know, Brett was never like, oh, you know, I want you to work exclusively with me. He was like, no, make money. Be out there. So I just, uh, I was thrilled to do that EP with those boys. And the Opera House was was very kind and we, we got the audio and Brett mastered it and mixed it and it's it's a ripper it's, and it's it's free so you guys can go download it a thousand times and turn it up to ten there you go free free music for you guys because yeah. in this day and age the, where people really don't pay for music but you can still get this uh, half price now on yeah. your website until so, June thirtieth. So last. make it happen. Support a local artist. You know they got to eat too. And even if you don't have a turntable, that looks great in a frame. It right? That looks great it's, in a frame. It's so. great. It's great art right there. That's yeah. what you're paying for. You're paying for art. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Bill Norton says Ed CD has been the only CD in my Jeep for the past year. So that that's a compliment right there. 
I think Bill Norton is trying to kiss my ass. Is that, that's what I think is happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. You know, a little ass kissing every once in a while can't hurt. No, I, Bill and I go way yeah. back to childhood. He's a good, he's a good boy. <laughs> he's a good guy. I, t- I tell I tell people all the time like I don't I don't want my ass kissed that's that's I'm not one of those guys or anything <laughs> but like at least tell me you've watched the show before you invite yourself like a lot of people are like hey yeah I'm in this band invite me on the show and we'll you know whatever I want to promote you guys that's awesome but you gotta you gotta support us too you know you, you gotta like be like oh yeah I've literally watched at least one episode you know actually. Actually, Gene and Miranda from the Slurp Shop, they were the ones that were like, ah, right? then, so that's why I'm here. Right, we were, t- we were talking about you amongst uh, you know, a lot of the artists that they've yeah. featured in their various uh, uh, venues and events and all that kind of stuff, and you know, that's what we're, we're talking about, mutual support. Yeah, they put on a great, like, my one record release was, oh my god, that dinner. I'm still oh, know, dreaming right? about that dinner, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> That's art right there. Yeah. Oh my God, food. So let's uh, let let's close on what you've probably been waiting for. Uh, w- would you like to uh, to do a song for? Sure, us? I'll do a song. Um, I do I do some acapella pieces in the set. One, you know, to give Brett a little bit of, of, of a break. He works really hard, and then also too, like acapella is really natural because that's how my songs develop. That's like how they start. Mm. So acapella uh, is, is, was just a no-brainer. <laughs> and so I started introducing it to the set. And what's cool is like people don't expect it. Yeah. And they're like, oh. So it's wild. So this is, a, this is an old Sunhouse song. I'll get out of your way. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you here next Thursday. Have a good night, everybody. Mm. Add everybody. Don't you mind people grinning in your face Don't you mind people grinning in your face Oh, but bear this in mind A true friend is hard to find Don't you mind people grinning in your face People be grinning in your face They cut you up and down And when your back is turned They're gonna cut you down, oh But bear this in mind A true friend is hard to find Don't you mind People grinning in your face your mama will talk about you, your brother and your sister too. They be judging you for how you choose to live. Oh, but bear this in mind, a true friend is hard to find. Don't you mind people grinning in your face? I said, don't you mind. People grinning in your face one more. Don't you mind people grinning in your face?